Hello everyone, my name is Andrew, today we continue learning Python and today we'll talk about the biggest problems in Django security. So those issues are not only related to Django, but to Fast API, Node.js or any project that is somehow related to the web. However, Django is uh, the framework that I see those problems arise with the most. And uh, yeah, because of that, that's the name of the video. The biggest security problems with Django. Of course, when we talk about security, there can be tons of problems and all of those depend on the project itself. So the code of the Django project, on the code of the other parts of our application. And today we'll talk about the problems that arise the most and they are related to the deployment. If you want to talk about uh, the biggest Django problems or the most common Django problems that uh, all the beginners make, then you can watch my other video here or here. I don't know when it's gonna pop up, but that video is gonna explain you all the common problems with the code. However, that one is related to security. So the first problem that we're gonna talk about is server header. So here you can see two server headers. The first one shows you server um, nginx 1180 slash Ubuntu, something like that. I don't remember the whole header. And the next one shows you VSGI server, CPython and that stuff. So what are those and how do we get them? When you make any requests, there is a header in the response coming from the server, which is called server. And it shows you what the, what's the software of the application that you're working with. So in our case, we can see that the first header, it's, it's a little bit better than the second one. And I'll explain why in a minute, but the first header shows us nginx 1.18.0 Ubuntu. And what is that? Nginx, for, it, for those of you who don't know, is a web server and it's a very popular proxy web server and lots of people use it for Django applications. However, that header is not the problem itself. The problem is 1.18.0 so, and Ubuntu in parentheses, I think. So what is the problem with that? When we work with any application, we want to show as little information as possible. So as a hacker. And by the way, don't uh, ever hack anything. I'm not responsible for your actions. It's just a tutorial for you to defend your own applications. All right, so as a hacker, if I know something about our project, I can have pinpoints where I can just use them. So for example, right now I know that that project runs on Nginx 1.18.0 and uh, Ubuntu is the OS of that server. So what do I know about that? version of our nginx version is really really important and ubuntu is really really important as well because what i can do now is just go to the google and uh, search for vulnerabilities or common vulnerabilities with nginx 1.18.0 and uh, on ubuntu or something like that so what i can actually do is search for those vulnerabilities and uh, you can see the screen now it shows you like a list of google searches that uh, any of you can find and any of you can use. However, that is the biggest problem. And why that? Because that server response shows or that server header in our response shows us the version and the operating system of our server. And there is one line that can prevent us from showing that. So that line in Nginx is called tokens off. Nginx is the most common server, Apache and other web servers do that as well. So they all show their version by default, but what you need to do as a developer or as uh, anyone in your company is mask those version and operating system of your underlying server. However, why is it important once again? Because if I show as little information as possible, then hackers don't know what to search for. For example, that is the next header. So as you can see, it just tells us server Nginx. And why is that much better? Because now, as a hacker, I don't know the version of that software. So the only thing that I can do is search for Nginx vulnerabilities. I can't add any version to my uh, search request. And uh, because of that, I can uh, search for vulnerabilities in version 1.18.0, but the version on the server is going to be 2.5.3, something like that. And um, some vulnerabilities may not work with uh, all the version of Nginx because they are getting patched. And that is just one of the examples, because right now I have not as much information as I used to have with that header. Okay, so now let's go to the next header, which is 
VSGI server, CPython 3.7.5. What is that? Seven months ago, six or seven months ago, I was asked to work on a project. And um, the first thing that I did is went to their website and checked for that setting, so for server response. And uh, what I saw was shocking because I saw VSGI server, CPython, all that. For those of you who are not familiar with how Python works with web or who have never deployed any of the web projects with Python, Python uses something called VSGI server. But the problem with that header, with that response, is that it shows us VSGI server and then it shows us C, Python and the version of our Python. So I thought, wait a minute, I know that the same header, the same exact header shows when I run pymanage.py run server in Django. Uh, PyManage.py run server in Django is a command that allows you to run your uh, project in development, so for only for you, so you can like write some code, improve your project, so only for the development purposes. But those people, what they did, they deployed their project and instead of using Nginx, Apache or other web servers as um, the person did with that header, so where Nginx 1.19.0, instead of that they just deployed their project and used Python managed the POI run server in production. And because of that, they yeah, they had that uh, header exposed. Okay, so what can I do now as a hacker? As a hacker right now, I can run specific attacks using that header. So now I don't want to run attacks on Nginx because there is no Nginx in that uh, application. I need to search for specific attacks either on VSGI server 0.2 or on CPython 3.7.5. And that is the biggest problem. Because as a Django developer, I know that if you run PyManage.py run server, then maybe you forgot to turn off the bug in production. And those guys did it. So they had the bug turned on in production. Of course, if you have the bug, then you can uh, leak passwords. Yeah, you have the bug. It's only for development purposes and you should never do that in production. So you can do whatever you want with the project if your debug is on. And uh, yeah, kind of like that. That's the story. So what do we need to do with two of those examples? The first example where we have Nginx 1.18.0 as, uh, as our header, what we need to do here is actually use one line, which is called server tokens off. So server tokens off is a configuration line in Nginx that allows you to just turn off your version and your operating system exposure in, uh, in your header, in your server header. It basically just the one, one line you write in your nginx config file and yeah, you restart your uh, web server and that will work fine. So now you can see the server nginx response once again because now we don't have a version and that is better. Yeah, I showed it to you. And with cpython and all that stuff, that's just a mess and we should never run pymanage.py run server in production. What we need to do is run nginx with server tokens off. What is even better is that if instead of just using server tokens off, because we still can see that we use Nginx as our underlying server. And imagine that there is a big vulnerability that can be used on all of the Nginx versions. And that vulnerability can just uh, turn off your project in a minute. If that's the case, then um, hackers know that, okay, it's Nginx and maybe we can try that vulnerability. What's even better than just using Nginx as, so just writing server tokens off is, um, to mask the name of your web server at all. So for example, if you have project myproject.com, what you can do is instead of showing Nginx as the server response, you can write my project server or something like that. Because if we're talking about Google Web Services, for example, they show GVS as their server. They don't show Nginx, Apache or other stuff because they basically use them, but they mask their headers in order to prevent those kinds of attacks and in order to show that we are working with Google Web Services. So the same can be done in your project. So you just change your, um, yeah, you just change Nginx or Apache to something else with server tokens off. That's even better, but for 99% of the projects, just turning off the server tokens setting will be all right. Okay, now let's go to the next problem, which is open ports. So what is that? You can see the example right now. So we have our open port 80, then we have HTTP and we have our Nginx 1.18 and that stuff. And we have 443, SSL, HTTP, 
or HTTPS, I don't remember the whole name. And then we have our Nginx once again. And we also have 22 SSH and OpenSSH and the version of that software. So what are those? Open ports are basically ports that you open on your server in order to do something. For example, uh, port 80 or port 443 are used to connect with HTTP and HTTPS, SSL and HTTPS. Port 22 is used to connect with SSH. So SSH is a protocol that allows you to basically connect to your servers and execute some commands on them. So yeah, you can connect to your servers and run some commands on your machines. So those ports are fine. And that project is fine with only three open ports because what you need to do is connect to your server, so port 22. A lot of programs and a lot of projects don't open um, 22nd port right now, but still, it's a viable technique, so you can open port 22 in order to connect to your servers in order to run some codes. Port 80 is used to connect to HTTP gateways. So, yeah, HTTP gateways, when you make your request as a user, when you make your request as anyone, you need to somehow connect to your project. So you need to somehow connect to Django, to FastAPI, and in, the, in that case, we need to use port 80 as our HTTP port. And uh, 443 SSL or HTTPS, if you are more familiar with that, is uh, another port that we are using to connect to our secure HTTP endpoint. Very basic. So three open ports and all of them are useful. However, some projects allow you to, or some projects open up ports that should not be opened in any case. For example, I uh, saw a project that opened port 3306, I think, and that port is port of my SQL. So the database was opened to the internet. And what is the problem with that? The problem with open ports is that if you have something that works on that port and you open it to the internet, then people can uh, connect to it and uh, do some stuff on your server. For example, in that case, people connected to the database, so the database was open to the internet, people connected to it, so hackers connected to it, and uh, locked the database. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like that. So what you need to do in open ports is check that each port is closed and only the ports that you really need are open. If you have something, so try to always show as little as possible, because if you have five open ports, then you have five vectors of attacks for your project. If you have only one open port, then you have only one vector of attack. It doesn't mean that your project is fully secure if you only have one port. But what does that mean is that you reduce the risk of exposure of your project. And if you wonder what is the program that I show you here, it's called ZenMap or NMap. Basically, it's a utility that allows you to just connect to the servers and scan all of the ports. UTP ports, TCP ports were a good program and a lot of hackers and a lot of security people use it. So yeah, NMap or ZenMap, if you want to download it, you can see the name. You can download it on Linux, Mac OS, it's not an ad, it's just a really good program. What you can do here is uh, scan for, so write your IP address or write your domain name to the to the program and then scan for all the open ports. Aside from that, as you can see, we we can we can observe that uh, we have nginx 1.18.0 Ubuntu and we have OpenSSH. So never forget that if you have open ports, then it's even better if you close all of the names of those services. So you have an open port and we have a service or a program that works on that port. If we close the program itself, then it's better because the only thing that we have right now is open port. In uh, that case, it's yeah, it's pretty good because we only have three open ports, but what's not good is that we have Nginx 1.18.0 as our program. So we can see that, uh, yeah, we can see that we have Nginx web server as a program on that server and we also have OpenSSH and the whole version of that OpenSSH. Using that OpenSSH software, I can predict or I can guess that uh, the, the OS of that uh, server is Linux. Because it basically says Linux in the OpenSSH um, service itself, so in OpenSSH service description. So what you need to do is mask all of that stuff. Yeah, so as little information as possible. If you can mask that stuff without breaking anything, so some programs may require you to show their versions in order to connect to each other. But if you can, mask all the stuff and uh, 
show as little information as possible. Okay, and the third big problem is open admin panel. So open admin panel, what do I mean by that? If we have a Django project, what we need to do is close our admin panel for all of the people that do not belong to our organization or to our team. Because if our admin page is open to the internet, what I can do is go to it. And if I have an ability to connect to your admin page and write username and password in order to get in, what may happen is that hackers will either get my passwords from, uh, I don't know, from unsecure Wi-Fi locations, or they may get my passwords, my usernames or other usernames and passwords from phishing or from some other sort of activity. And if they do, they can just connect to your website, write the password and write the username and go into your admin page and change anything that you, they want in your database and in your project. So that is very, very bad obviously, and what you need to do is just close your admin panel with some sort of um, network protection. So you can either use VPN, so virtual private network, in order to connect to your server and allow only the IP addresses that are web, that are using that uh, VPN to access your admin page, so all the other people will just see 404 not found or 403 HTTP code which is uh, forbidden. But uh, what you can actually do is just buy a VPN or buy all of the connections that go into your project outside of your organization's network. Kind of like that. Because username and passwords are not enough. So you need some kind of security that allows you to really check that. The only people that access your admin page are the people within your organization. What you can do with Nginx is ban the IP addresses or only allow the IP addresses of certain ranges or even certain API addresses like one to one to one. And uh, yeah, 